Hello, this is Ed Close again on Science and Spirituality TV. Welcome back. In the previous presentation, we talked about the most important question of all, which was posed by uh, the German polymath Leibniz about 300 years ago. And that question was, why is there something rather than nothing? I suggested in the previous uh, presentation that subquark symmetry is the basis of stability in the physical structure of the universe. In other words, if we don't have stability at the innermost level of the particles that make up the structure, the physical structure of the universe, if they're not stable and break down, then we would not have a universe at all. We'd have nothing. But we have something, and that's because they are stable. And that stability, that stability, as I mentioned, is based on symmetry of these subquark and quark and subatomic particles. In this presentation, I will explain why symmetry is necessary, necessary for stability in the discrete spinning objects like the objects we call elementary particles. Notice that the three objects in this slide are symmetrical even though their surfaces are not smooth. When spinning rapidly, they occupy spherical volumes of space. That's because they are regular solid forms even though their surfaces are not smooth like a sphere. Consider a lump of clay on a potter's wheel. If the potter doesn't form it into a shape symmetric about the axis of the wheel, as the velocity of the wheel increases, the clay will begin to wobble, and at some point, as the wheel speeds up, that piece of clay will fly apart or fly off the wheel. By shaping it into a ball, a cylinder, or other symmetric form, the potter creates a stable, smoothly spinning object and eventually turns it into a work of art. Experimental evidence overwhelmingly indicates that elementary particles are spinning very rapidly and behave as if they were tiny spheres, even though they may not actually be spherical. Like those objects in the first slide, they may be regular, but they may not be spherical necessarily, but they act that way, and quantum mechanical experiments bear that out for all the particles, not just uh, some of them. Experimental evidence also shows that subatomic particles like protons and neutrons are made up of two kinds of smaller particles called up quarks and down quarks. Spinning protons and neutrons are stable, so they must be symmetric. But that symmetry also depends on the symmetry of their constituents, the, par the quarks, the up and down quarks. Particle collider data showed that up quarks and down quarks have different masses and different size, and that protons are made of two up quarks plus one down quark, and neutrons are made of one up quark plus two down quarks. Following the law of parsimony, that is, not making anything more complicated than it has to be, we conclude that these quarks must be symmetric. Objects that are symmetric in three dimensions are called regular polyhedra, or solids, and the sphere. There are only five convex polyhedra shown in this slide. By convex, that means their surfaces don't go inward anywhere. And if they spin, they certainly would, would occupy a, a spherical shape. So, does that mean that elementary particles have to have one of these five shapes? 
No, it doesn't, because there are an infinite number of regular polyhedra, like the three we showed in the, in the first slide, with alternating convex and concave, equally, equal sides, polygon faces like the regular polyhedra and the one at the bottom of this slide. Any of them, however, when spinning, as I said, will occupy a spherical three-dimensional volume. Of the elementary particles with mass, electrons are the least massive, up quarks are more massive, and down quarks are the most massive of the three. Max Planck discovered that energy is quantized, and Einstein showed that mass is a form of energy. Taking the electron mass as unitary, the mass equivalence of the three particles, electrons, up quarks, and down quarks, is 1, 4, and 9, respectively. Since 9 is not divisible by 4, the quarks must be composed of yet smaller, distinct subquark units. If so, the subquark units are the true final building blocks of the universe. In a quantized reality, can we add two spinning particles of different size and have them equal uh, another spinning particle, all of them being symmetric and stable? And the answer is no, we can't. In the next several slides, I will explain how and why only certain particle sizes with specific numbers of discrete symmetric units can combine to form the stable complex structures that we find in our universe. Even if mathematical logic is not your thing, I hope you have listened to my video on mathematics and we'll have a look at the next several videos which explain how I put consciousness into the equations and how that actually achieves the stability at the uh, subatomic level that is needed for us to have something instead of nothing in our physical universe. Thank you and I'll See you next time.